welcome back to Vigor. It is your boy, Stealth Jet, leader of the JSS. Remember that video I posted where if you watched to the very end, you got a surprise? Well, there's no point in me hiding what happens. I said that I won the heart of a subscriber to this channel. Welcome, Critten. Critten was watching me in that battery drought encounter, and he added me as a friend. I added him back, invited him to a party, and I said, "Hey, bro, what's going on? Um, did I did I kill you, or did what? Why did you add me?" And he said, "Well, you avenged me." The guy with the machine gun killed me, and I watched you kill him, and I watched your video, so I added you. And to you, and to you, Critton, I say thank you. And so I told him thank you, obviously, and I said, how would you like to run one real quick, before I hop off and run some errands real quick? He said, sure. And so this is that encounter. Now Critton says that he's not really uh, an aggressive player, but he's more of an opportunist like me. Like most of you are who watch this channel. Most. I know I got some sweats here. Yes, your moist towel, that tells me. Now there will be no objectives put up. Because it's it's kind of hard to put the objectives of him and myself up here as well. At the time of this recording, this, this uh, encounter was played relatively recently. So I should be able to walk y'all through what's going on here. So I say, you can loot the house, Critton, and I'm going to watch this container. But then he says, well, what about the sawmill? And I say, fair point, let's go. And so we waddle our way down to the sawmill, and, you know, about five seconds, and now we're here. And we both crouch walk. Good sign. There's a detector to our right. And right here, he tells me, I do have a PSD. And I say, you know, we don't need to use that right now. Save it to the end. Save it to the end. Now, here's the time safe. Critton has a full auto SVU. And he brought a full auto SVU. And I thought that was a person right there. He bought a full auto SVU because he wanted to make sure that he got his kills in. Now, he's behind me, and he says, do you want me to hit the detector? And I say no. Right now, we're stealthy. No need to use our presence, or no need to reveal our presence. Now, I'm not saying Critton is like, I need to know where everybody's at. No, 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 no. He's just giving me, like, suggestions to make the game better. That's all. That's all. So, I'm looking, right, in this direction, and Critton's behind me. And I ask him, do you hear anything? And he says, no. Now, then I get the idea, because now some time has passed. I say, Creighton, watch that time safe. Because I'm about to go for the detector now. I am. And yes, the tower's right here. But I don't want to hit that. I'm going to hit the detector. And just to make sure nobody's around, I look don't say anything let's make sure one more time don't say anything but then I hear this a comm station that hasn't been used yet and I'm like okay well there's that one and then there's this one both haven't been hit yet so I'm gonna walk up here and I'm gonna hit that one because Critton hit the other one I believe but if I'm wrong, then yes, my memory, my memory is definitely fuzzy, and uh, it's, look, I play this game too much, so I'm going to say. Now, some time has passed, and I'm going to make the airdrop radiator. Some time has passed, and still, nothing has happened. No gunshots or anything. And so, I'm going to walk up here, go down, still haven't heard anything. And now, Critton brings up the notion of the detector one more time. 
and he's gonna check that weapons box you know that's fine now he's gonna hit it look at him prone behind it smart man now he tells me that there's a person near the time safe and honestly this is why I held off using the detector for so long because if you don't do anything eventually something's gonna happen now I regret I regret saying yes to hitting that detector because now the team knows that somebody's near here now things are about to get hairy so as I'm walking here no point being stealthy because now they know that we're nearby I see that I say Creighton there's a padlock over there put your SVU on full auto go prone and watch that padlock they're here and one of them has to come outside and hit that padlock if they want to save. And they have to come outside. The only cover they have is these rail cars. And that's where you will take you out in about three hits, if not two. At that range, especially. So, I tell him to watch that padlock. I'm going around. Because A, I want to see where this other padlock is. And B, I want to see where this other team is. Or where this, this team is currently located. There goes one. Now I'm waiting for Critton to tell me something. But then. And I'm going to explain myself fully here. My headphones have the. Uh, how can I put this? Bi-directional audio. To where it will be 100% game audio. Or 100% voice audio. And I tell him here. That I'm putting it all to 100% game audio so I won't be able to hear you so right now at this point I don't hear anything anything Critton is saying anything at all but I say through my mic because you can still hear me there is at least one person in the sawmill I heard footsteps so he's watching that end and I'm watching this end and again a padlock has been hit they don't know where the second one is and now I hear them outside Critton's moving I don't know why he's moving but then I hear really close footsteps really close freaking fast footsteps again I don't know what Critton is saying but I'm telling him I mean I don't know if he's talking right now either I'm telling him they're both in here and they may be on the top floor and I think about pulling up like this and tossing a grenade in there because I heard him go up to the second floor, and I think the time safe is on the second floor. So while I'm sitting here trying to figure out where they're at and if I can enter safely, Critton freaking goes in there with a grenade and takes them both out. Look at his health. He took some damage. And I'm like, yo, what the hell? Critton, what did you do? This man done made a whole graveyard. And he pinged me with the time safe. He says, bro, go get the time safe. I done killed both of them. I was like, what? Well, shit. Okay, cool, I guess. Good job, Critton. Good job. So now I tell him, I found a picture. I'm going to loop this guy. Doesn't have anything. Now he's healing up. Walk to the time safe. He got everything out of it. It's cool. He basically wiped this entire area out with one grenade. Dude, smart play. Smart play. And so, I tell him, now it's time for you to use your PSD. And he says that there's a person over near the, um, the sawmill, the other one. And I say, okay, I do, have a, I do have two grenades. Is your ping, is your star on the map, not the ping, but the star on the map, is that exactly where he's at? And he says, yes, right on that star is where he's at. And I say, okay. And so what I'm going to do, and he reaffirms me by pinging it. What I'm going to do is walk up here and toss a grenade. That's the plan. And yes, airdrop is incoming. So that's the plan. I'm going to sneak up behind him. But then somebody uses the detector and then the tower. And 2 plus 2 plus 4 equals 8. Dude is over there. And so, we move it into high gear. 
and I'm watching the area from up here and I say well shit I mean I don't know where the airdrop is because you were in the destructive area I'm gonna run out here and make myself a target and stand by Critton and so sure enough I role play a headless chicken and the guy pops up like a whole demon so he sees Critton too believe it or not and I tell him he's there and Critton gets hit but I take him out now Critton listen I was not trying to make you bait at all the guy saw me he popped up and then you popped up too he saw whatever he saw he saw and he shot what he saw what he shot at last let me see that one more time he shot at what he saw last and I tell Critton, bruh, he has VSS. I'm sorry, I'm taking it. Critton says, yeah, that makes sense, because that thing tore me up. And I say, uh, you know, there's his body. If you want, have some heals. And then he's, and wait, no, he says he needs heals. And I say, crap, I took him, my fault. Then I tell him, oh, wait, I got the picture. And I say, give me a second. I'm going to find this picture, and you can get your heals back. And so, sure enough, all I gotta do is find it and it's right here now out of an act of courtesy I say dig up that cash you get the XP or whatever you need from it and I'll take the rest and I'm watch his back now that container I'm looking at it on the map and I'm like did we miss an opportunity because I think somewhere between now and before we hit that time safe, he used his PSD and he said there is two at the container. Or one at the container, which makes two. And I'm like, maybe we did miss an opportunity, but it's cool though. It's cool though. And so now, we both got secondaries. We both got dangerous weapons. What's next? Well, why not hit the detector again? And look, I'm bringing all this gameplay because this is how a team operates. This is why you gotta keep moving. And so I'm gonna use it. And what do we have? Well, we got two people right here. And they're at the airdrop. And so I tell him, shit, bro, they're going for an airdrop. I made it radiated. I don't know if we made it overweight, but we can probably catch them. We probably can. But then the time, the ticker of the radiation presence is coming up. And as we're running, the thought hits me. They already have a head start on us. And at the same time too, they know where we're at. If I were them, I'd be running scared right now. And sure enough, I say, you know what? We're not even going to catch them. Because they already got it. They already got the airdrop, so no point in chasing kills. Yes, that thing is radiated, but they may have caffeine and they have a very good head start on us. So why not take our really good weapons and leave? And sure enough, that's what we do. If you're wondering why you're seeing that grenade dialogue at the bottom of your screen, it's because Critton says, you know, they could be at this exit too. Do we have any grenades? And I say, yes, I have two. But then when we, when we walked up there, didn't see anybody, the prompt stayed at the bottom of the screen. I don't know why that's the case, but that's the case. And so, I came out of there with 5k XP and a golden crate. Critton, if you're watching this, my boy, I appreciate the encounter. And to all who watch my videos and you know, wonder like, damn, Jet, why, how do you survive against teams? Well, back in the day, I used to run duos a lot. I used to. But now, I done ran duos so much back in the day that I'm so used to being a solo player that I know how a team operates. Use this video, my new player who gets constantly pinged and hunted down by teams. Use this video as a guide. Now, we're, Critton and I, we're not sweaty players. We're just opportunists. But think about everything we just did and turn it up to four and multiply it by two. That is how our team operates. You seen how that solo player evaded us for a little bit? 
but he gave away his location by using the detector and the tower. That was his mistake, and that's how we caught him. Use his video as a guide to see how you can survive against teams. Critton, thank you once again. I'll catch y'all in the next episode. Until next time, peace.